Hi, today we're going to cover how to inexpensively convert a Fujifilm point-and-shoot camera to infrared. In front of us we'll see the various supplies that we're going to use. Moving from the left, we're going to start with the Fujifilm E550. Why this camera? Because it shoots in RAW, which allows us the best ability to post-process the images. Secondly, we have the screwdrivers. As you'll see, there's the Y000 screwdriver at the top with a blue handle. It's about $2 on Amazon. I also have a bit set at the bottom. It's the Tri-Wing. Moving over to the right, we have an XD card reader, which is needed unless you have a cable to go from your camera to your computer. I have very small screwdrivers, typically Phillips head, a couple flatheads. A voltmeter, which I'm going to use to discharge the capacitor. Um, this is very important to do. Even if you have the batteries out of the camera, there's a high amount of charge in that capacitor and you don't want to touch it, which I've done before. Not fun. Uh, and the final piece is on the right. There's a conversion tube to allow us to use the infrared filter, which you'll see at the bottom. Uh, I purchased the, uh, the tube on uh, Amazon. It's also available on eBay as well as the filters. I'm using 760, uh, a 760 filter for this project. The first step that we're going to take is to open the case. You'll find various screws along the outside. On the bottom, one, two, three. On the right side, one. And on the left side, one, two. Remove all of these screws. Once the screws are all removed, then go onto the side of the camera. and pull it apart. Set the back to the side. Remove the screen assembly. Use a Phillips head small screwdriver, like a jeweler's screwdriver, to remove the one screw holding the lens assembly to the motherboard. You'll then find that the whole screen assembly can pivot down. Using a small flathead screwdriver, push down on the blue pins that secure the cable for the screen assembly. Pull that free. You'll find a little piece of tape on the left side. You can remove that as well. Set those aside. You can then use your voltmeter to discharge the capacitors. To do this, Pull back on this covering and touch one prong to each of the raised silver tabs. This will discharge your capacitor. We're then going to remove the two cables securing the motherboard to the rest of the unit. You'll find one here and one here. For this, we're just going to use some pressure. To remove the cables. You'll find four screws and two cables still to remove. One, two, three, four. Remove this cable the same way that you removed the last one. And then we're going to pry this small harness away. Using our fingernail. At that point the board can remove along with the trigger assembly back and away. At this point we're going to peel away the silver covering behind the lens assembly. Here we'll find various screws holding down the assembly.
can then remove up this assembly using the cable shown at the bottom. Turn it over and we'll find the hut mirror. To remove the hut mirror, merely use your thumbnail to lift up and the hut mirror in the gasket will pull away. You can then replace the CCD by placing it into the original location. And replacing the securing plate. Note the notch at the top left of the securing plate goes into a small plastic tab after which you can replace the two screws. and replace the silver protector. It's the plate we can now put the whole assembly back together. We're going to turn the board back over, place the trigger assembly back to where it started and drop the entire assembly into place. What you'll notice here with the trigger is that there's some tabs which must be aligned. That's probably the most difficult part of this is just getting those aligned to fall back into place. We're going to use a screwdriver to get that cable above, get this cable above, and we're pretty much set at this point. Replace your four screws, one, two, three, and four, and replace the cables. These two cables push into place. Just to note, this connector and this connector have little flip up con covers, which you might flip up replace the cable and then push down. Place the cable right under that connector and then that flips back down. Replace the microphone connector at the side and at that point we can replace the screen. As we did before this blue piece is pushed down at the very edges with a flathead screwdriver. And the cable slipped right above the blue connector and under the white. Once it's in there, push back up on each edge of the blue connect of the blue plate until it's secured. Flip the cover, flip the screen back over. and re-secure using the screw.
At this point we can replace the screen. The one catch point is the jack right there. So we're going to carefully get that tab underneath, get the jack over there. And the camera should snap back together. At that point you can replace the screws one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we have an infrared camera. The final step is to remove the accessory ring. For this, you'll see three little dots. Turn it counterclockwise. Take off the ring. Grab our filter ring along with a newer IR760 52mm filter. And put it on by aligning the red dot with the button at the bottom. And turn clockwise. We're now done completing our Fujifilm E550 IR camera conversion. Okay, we're now going to briefly cover how to use this camera. What we're going to find is that the image is very, very red. That's because it's picking up the infrared without the hot filter. The camera is not exactly sure what to do yet. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to stick the selection on P, hit menu, Go to one selection above auto, which is manual white balance. We're going to aim it at the white source and see that it's completed. We're also going to go into the menu selection. Go to Setup, go to Menu 3, which says Raw, and make sure that that's set to On. We want Raw so that we can do the most image manipulation after the fact. You're all ready to shoot with your camera.